Hi, this is an audio visual study guide for chapter 11 of Dana Harris's Introduction to Biblical Greek Grammar. This is going to review the important concepts listed in the study guide at the end of the chapter in an audio visual way. If, if there's something you don't understand, then you need to go back to the chapter uh, to study it and reacquaint yourself with it. So, aorist passives and the use of tense formatives. The aorist passive does not use the same form as the aorist middle. So the uh, present middle and the imperfect middle use the same form as the present and imperfect passive, but the aorist does not. It has a new form. It uses secondary active endings, but it uses a different tense formative they to distinguish it from the aorist active indicative. Because the tense formative ends with a vowel, there is no need for a connecting vowel. So the way you form the aorist passive is with the augment epsilon, the aorist passive tense stem, in this case, lu, aorist passive tense formative, they, and the secondary active personal ending, nu, which gives you the inflected form, eluthane. The construction of passive indicative tense forms. The primary middle endings are used for both the present middle indicative and the present passive indicative. The secondary middle endings are used for both the imperfect middle indicative and the imperfect passive indicative. The context is gonna make it clear whether the verb is passive or middle. The passive voice indicates that the subject receives the action, which is different from the middle voice, which indicates that the subject performs the action. But because the forms are gonna be the same, you could parse it either way unless you read uh, the context. Morphological changes due to the addition of a theta. We have seen that certain morphological changes occur when a sigma is added to a stem that ends in a consonant. Similar morphological changes occur when a theta is added to a stem that ends in a consonant. Thus, for example, the aorist passive of ago is ekthane, and the aorist passive of patho is epasthane. These are summarized below. So for the labials, pi, theta, phi, and pi tau plus a theta, you're gonna get a phi theta. The, Dental for nu and tau, delta, theta, zeta, plus theta, you're going to get sigma thetas. And for guttural, kappa, gamma, and chi, plus a theta, you're going to get chi theta. Ultimate and intermediate agency. Agency refers to the person responsible for a given action. Instrumentality refers to an object that is used to carry out an action. Ultimate agency, which you could also refer to as primary agency or direct agency, refers to the person who is ultimately responsible for an action. This is often expressed by passive voice verbal form followed by hupo plus the genitive. Elthen Jesus, kai e baptiste eston yordanen hupo yanu. So if we just saw e baptiste, we would say Jesus came and was baptized, but we don't know by who. Eston yordanen hupo yanu. Hupo yanu means by John. If you're uh, up on your reading, but you're shaky on the grammar, you would still be able to understand that this was baptized in the Jordan by John. Ultimate and intermediate agency. We can also speak of intermediate agency or secondary agency, which refers to the person who carries out an action for the ultimate agent. This is often expressed by a passive voice verb followed by dia plus the genitive. Tapanta dia alto, kai saltan ectistai. All things have been created through him and for him. Again, if you're a little shaky on grammar, but you can read uh, pretty fluently, then you will understand this uh, pretty well without needing to hold the grammar concept in your mind. Instrumentality. Instrumentality, also in personal agency or means, refers to the instrument used to carry out an action. This is most often expressed by a passive voice verb, followed by n plus the dative or sometimes the dative alone. En any pneumati himes pantes esen soma e baptistemen. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Lagizamatha gar dikaiustai piste anthropon. For we maintain a person is justified by faith. Function of first and second class conditional. So, first of all, conditional sentences posit a condition in the form of an if clause and a result stating the outcome if the condition is met in the form of a then clause. If we pass beginning Greek, then we will proceed to Greek exegesis. The if clause is called a protasis. The then clause is called the apodosis, not apodosis. That's a typo, it's apodosis. Greek conditionals are classified according to the presence of a or an, 
in the protasis and the presence or absence of the particle on in the apodosis. So for first class, if you have A plus any tense indicative, it, um, if it's negative, it uses an U. Uh, and in the apodosis, you have any tense or mood. That first class, second class is A plus an imperfect aorist or aorist indicative, if negated, which we use a may, and on plus the same indicative tense as protasis. So first you're gonna see what is the tense if it's indicative, uh, and there is no on in the apodosis, you're gonna say, oh, it's first class. If you see an oo because it's negated, that's also a clue, this is first class. If you see an A plus an it's imperfect or aorist indicative, then you're gonna look in the apodosis for an on, and if it uses an on plus the same indicative tense as the protasis, you're gonna say, oh, that's a second class conditional. Again, if, it, if negated and it uses a may, that's an additional clue, this is second class conditional. The function of first and second class conditionals then, first and second class conditionals are often used rhetorically or to posit a point in a larger argument. In first class conditionals, the protasis presents a condition that is assumed to be true for the sake of the argument, although in fact it may not be true. You've got to understand the context. So, e ha cosmos humas mise, kinoskete hati eme proton humon me miskein, me miskein. If the world hates you, then know that it hated me first. We know that that is true. A necroi uk egerontai phagomen kai eomen auriongar apotheneskomen. If the dead are not raised, then let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. We know the dead are raised, so Paul here is positing a hypothetical in order to make a point of the argument to its logical conclusion. In second class conditionals, the protasis presents a condition that is known to be false or clearly understood to be false by the one making the argument, though the speaker may in fact be wrong. So uh, the, the speaker or the one making the statement believes this condition is false or known to be false. Agar epistuete muse epistuete an emoi. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me. Agar egnosan uk an ton kurion. For if they, the rulers of the sage, had understood, then they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Then you can and look at the forms here. And I hope you understand that they are uh, second class conditionals by the use of the particle on. And you've got uh, the uh, aorist there. All right, that's it for chapter 11. You need to be able to translate and read and understand uh, the present imperfect and aorist uh, passive tense.